Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I wanted to kind of do a brief chit chat about some of my bookish and channel goals for 2023. So I am one of those people that is actually a big believer in the magic of the new year. Whether or not you make new year's resolutions or wishes or goals for the new year or not, I do still think that the new year is a time for replenishment and renewment. It definitely does give a sense of a new beginning. So towards the end of the year, I really start to tie up any loose ends that might've been left. I start to vigorously clean my house and I just want basically the new year to be as fresh of a start as humanly possible. And so with that comes some goals that I wanna try to achieve in 2023 and that's what we are here to talk about particularly related to books and my channel. So let's go ahead and get the obvious one out of the way that is the Goodreads reading challenge and I am once again going to challenge myself to read 100 books. I first finally hit that goal in 2021 where I read 115 books. I'm not going to quite get 115 books this year, at least I don't believe that I am. I'm at about 106 at this point, so I'll probably get maybe about 110 by the end of the year, which is still definitely great, and I'm going to keep it at 100. I'm not going to increase it. The reason why is I typically go into this very unexplained but expected reading slump in around February, and between February and May or June, so it's quite a long time, I slump hard. I'm hoping that it doesn't happen but it's happened three years consecutively so I'm not holding out hope that it won't happen but because of that because I'm not reading anything there's always the likelihood that I won't actually reach that goal now the fact that I've been able to do it the past two years is flipping amazing to me so I'm going to hope that if the reading slump comes next year that I'm still able to reach that 100 book goal but because of that reading slump I don't want to try to aim higher for that I just think 100 is a solid start for me at the moment now if I didn't have the reading slump at this point I could probably easily reach 100 and then I could definitely bump it up to 110, 115, 120. But for now, it's going to remain at 100. Another big goal of mine in 2023 is to finish series. If you recently watched the 23 books that I want to read in 2023, a lot of those were related to series that are going to actually be completed or that are going to catch me up if I read those books. So my goal in 2023 is to finish at least 10 series, primarily series that have just been out there languishing. I finally just need to go ahead and wipe them out. I have so many series remaining where there's only like one, maybe two books left, and there's no reason for me not to complete them. The longer that they just sit there, the more I'm likely to lose interest in them or the more I feel guilty about starting new series when I have so many unread series on my shelf. So a really big goal of mine in 2023 is to finally finish some of those series. There are quite a few reading challenges that I'm going to be participating in in 2023 and my goal is to complete as many of them as humanly possible. This past year, I was also doing a lot of reading challenges, but I was really just reading whatever I wanted or what was already on my TBR and then fitting them into the challenges as I could. But my intention for 2023 is to actually finish all of the prompts, regardless of whether those books were already on my radar or on my TBR. So if I have to go out and specifically find a book to satisfy a prompt, I need to do that in order to be able to finish the challenge. So some of the challenges that I'm going to be partaking in is the A to Z challenge. I pretty much do that every year where you try to read one book that starts with each letter of the alphabet. Now, it's it's almost impossible usually for me to find one that starts with like Z or X, but we'll see if I can do that in 2023. I will also be doing the Always Fully Booked challenge, which is a challenge specific to the Always Fully Booked planner. So that's not really one that you might be able to go out and widely find because it's only in this planner. I will be doing the 52 book club challenge. I did do pretty well in that in 2022. I really enjoyed it. So I want to go ahead and continue with it. I will also be trying to do the 50 states and around the world challenge where you try to read one book from 50 states and then where you try to read one book from like maybe not every country, maybe from each continent or something like that. I will be participating in that challenge. I will also be doing the buzzword challenge, which is hosted by Lala from Books and Lala. I will be doing the around the year in 52 books challenge. That is a very new challenge to me. I had never heard of it before, but I do already have it set up in my planner that I will be participating. So we're going to see how that one goes. I'm also going to do the reading the rainbow where you try to read a book that has the colors of the rainbow on the title. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, etc. And then there is a thriller challenge that I will be participating in as well. So I definitely have a handful of challenges. I may try to add one or two more depending but there will likely also be monthly challenges as well so I will be trying to do those on top of them it's harder for me to do the monthly ones because I'm really limited to my monthly TBR and if the monthly TBR doesn't satisfy any of those prompts I'm kind of doomed but we're gonna see what I can do another big thing that I really want to do in 2023 is keep a lot better track of my reading statistics <laughs> 
I am definitely not somebody who keeps in-depth tracking of my reading. While I think it would be interesting to compare from year to year to year to see how I progress or regress in terms of reading, it's not necessarily something I feel compelled to spend the time and the energy to do. There are a few things that I would like to track more thoroughly. I primarily want to track the genres that I'm reading. I want to track my star ratings and I want to track series more thoroughly. So I do now have a series tracker in my planner and I'm planning on keeping that updated so that I can always know what series I'm in the middle of, what I have completed, what books are still remaining and so on. That is definitely a huge focus for me is to get better about keeping track of that because I feel like if I'm not aware of how many series I'm in the middle of, the more likely it's just going to continue to get out of hand and I'm going to have more in progress series and I definitely do not want to do that. So getting a lot better about tracking my series, about tracking my stats in general, specific stats, that is definitely what I want to do in 2023. I'm just going to stick with my handy dandy planner. I'm going to track what I can within my planner and I'm going to go ahead and and go over some of those stats, maybe possibly every quarter or twice a year next year. That is the plan. But in general, just getting better about keeping track of some of the stats that I feel are important to me. So it's not going to be very complex or complicated, but it will be interesting to me and I will be sure to share that next year. And then probably the final bookish goal that I have is really just to read books that are sent to me as they come in. I've mentioned this multiple times, especially recently, but over the past couple of years, I have done a really good job about lowering my physical TBR. It got to the point where I had maybe like 30 books on my physical TBR and my TBR shelf was looking very, very sad. <laughs> there were gaps all over it. And so I allowed myself to do quite a big haul in November and it is now full. It is looking much happier, but I don't want that shelf to be overflowing and I don't want that shelf to be stagnant. I want to consistently be reading books that I own and make sure that I'm not losing interest in the books that I own. And part of that is also going to be reading books from bookish subscription services as they come in as I'm able to read them. I feel like it's an extra challenge for me to read books as they come in and so I want to go ahead and accept that challenge. Now with my TBR game it might not necessarily be possible because if I have a large TBR I might not be able to fit them in but either way I'm going to try to make whatever books come into me a priority in 2023. On that note, I actually do have one more reading challenge that I have for myself. I'm going to be making a completely separate short video about this, but another goal of mine in 2023 is to only read backlist books. I have a virtual TBR of about 300 books at this point. That includes all of the books that I own physically, but it also includes all of the other books that are on my radar that I really want to get to. And I feel like if I am prioritizing new releases, which is not really my thing, I typically am almost always focused on backlist books. But even if I continuously read several new releases that come out, that is still a lot of backlist books that I'm not focusing on. And then my TBR of backlist books is just going to grow and grow and grow. And it's going to make it even harder for me to focus on some of those newer releases that I may be really excited about. So 2023 is really going to be a focus on backlist for me. I don't plan on reading any 2023 releases next year unless it is a book club selection. Hey y'all, editing Brittany here. So when I was making this goals video, I was originally going to say that because of my focus on backlist titles for 2023, I was going to have a caveat to my goal of reading books as they came into me from like bookish subscription services. And the caveat was that if the books are 2023 releases, I wasn't going to be reading them as they came in because I wouldn't be able to focus on my backlist. However, I do realize that basically all books subscription services, no matter what they are, are going to be sending 2023 new releases, especially Book of the Month, which is the primary subscription service that I have, and now Authentic Book Box, which of course is also going to be new releases. The only books that are likely to be sent to me for my backlist will be as part of the Facebook gifting group that I'm a part of, and there is also every possibility that they could send me some new releases as well. So I imagine that books that are sent to me are likely going to be most of the time 2023 releases, and if I don't read those as they come in, they're just going to be sitting on my shelves turning into back backlist books next year. So to prevent that from happening, I am still going to have a focus on reading books as they come into me. But every other book that I decide to read in 2023, if it's not a book that was sent to me or if it's not a book club pick, has to be a backlist title. So all titles 2022 and older will be considered backlist and those will be my focus in 2023 outside of book club picks and all bookish subscription services. So that is going to be the final bookish goal that I have set for myself in 2023. In terms of channel goals, I really only have two. The first and the most important and the major one is just to post consistently. I have technically had my channel for about three and a half years at this point. I believe July of 2019 was when I started my channel. And out of those three and a half years, I've maybe posted a year and a half worth of content in total. I have never been able to be consistent about it. Primarily, first of all, because of the slumps that I go into, because I just feel like, how am I supposed to create bookish videos if I'm not reading any books? Um, also, there are just times of burnout or times when I'm very, very busy and I legitimately do not have the bandwidth to sit down and film. And so that's caused me to be really inconsistent. So this last break, I think 
I stopped in March of 2021 and didn't come back until September of 2022. So that was about a year and a half break. And I don't want that to happen. Even if I'm going down to only one video a week, I want to still post consistently. And on top of that, I want to build better engagement with my channel. <laughs> I want to be able to interact more with the online bookish community, which is the whole reason why I make these videos in the first place. I am a book lover. I love talking about books. I love finding new books. I love turning people on to books that I love. I just, there's so much about this that I really enjoy. And it's one of the reasons why I came back in the first place is because I wanted to have a larger role in the online bookish community. Now I definitely can't do as much as everybody else. Like I can't maintain this platform and also be posting on Instagram and I don't even have a TikTok and I'll never go back to the trash fire that is Twitter. So I'm definitely not everywhere that I maybe could be to interact better with the online bookish community, but I'm doing what I can. And because of that, I still would like to build as much engagement as I can on this channel. And that of course also means building my viewership on YouTube. I would like to see my channel grow. And of course, posting consistently, engaging, all of that is going to help me get there. So it all kind of runs together. All right, that is it. Those are some of the bookish and channel goals that I have for 2023. I feel really confident. I feel really excited. I feel like I'm gonna go in and be very mindful about what I'm reading, tracking my reading, engaging with the online bookish community, definitely trying to update Goodreads and my planner on a regular basis. So we're going to see. I'm very much looking forward to going into 2023, having a very, very great year. And I hope that you all are too. Please comment down below and let me know some of your goals for 2023. They could be bookish. They could not be bookish. It doesn't matter to me, whatever you would like to share. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.